Well, let's talk now to Laura Dodsworth, who is author of A State of Fear, How the UK Government Weaponised Fear During the COVID-19 Pandemic. Laura, as if I didn't know already, what's your view when it comes to masks on kids? You can't guess, can you? Um, well, I think the problem is that by this stage, it's very clear that masks are about values and they're about signals rather than the evidence. Um, back in a select committee hearing last year, David Halpin described masks as a signal. Quite recently, um, a seasoned government advisor on a COVID task force told me that masks are to give you the illusion that the government is doing something and they're just theatre. There's really no evidence or proportionality behind masks. Now, some people might think that masks are quite a low cost way to prevent transmission. But if there's no evidence, I think it's... It's unfair that we're forcing children to, to carry this burden. Last year, um, children in the UK were, they suffered the second longest absence from school during the lockdowns in all of Europe. So keeping schools open is incredibly important, but it shouldn't be at the expense of, of children um, and having to follow an unevidenced non-pharmaceutical intervention, which is really about pandering to obsessed teaching unions. The, the, the education secretary did say this morning in his round of interviews that we do know this is a respiratory virus, therefore it's airborne. So wearing a mask may indeed help to reduce transmission. And, and supposedly the government's done a report based on 123 schools. And he's saying that there is evidence that this is going to cut circulation. Okay. But even if that were the case, do you still think it's right when children seemingly can't get particularly sick from this virus that they are taking a hit and having to cover up their faces, which I think is just stifling, essentially to protect mm. people generations older than them? OK, well, let's tackle the evidence and then let's tackle the harms for children. First of all, on the, on the evidence, I think it will really surprise people who've come to believe that masks are effective at stopping transmission, but there is no good quality evidence that masks work. What Nadeem Sahawi is talking about is an observational study which is considered low quality evidence. We haven't seen it yet. Parliament hasn't seen it yet. He says it's due out in the next 48 hours. Now, the reason that is important, though, even though it's not the gold standard, it's not a randomised controlled trial, is the World Health Organization does say that governments and public health authorities must um, monitor the effect of children wearing masks. And the reason they say that they must do that is because there are harms and the most important consideration is to do no harm to children. And the World Health, uh, World Health Organization itself says that the um, evidence is limited. Now, the question to ask is how many people would have to wear masks in classrooms for one person not to be infected. There's no quantifiable data for that. Therefore, I don't think there's really any sufficient evidence to impose masks on children. Masks are not no cost for children. Um, several studies um, quoted by the World Health Organization find there are factors such as warmth, irritation, breathing difficulties, discomfort and distraction that affect children. For children with learning difficulties or who are deaf or have auditory problems, obviously the problems are far more ser serious and distressing. I mean, our Prime Minister himself said that the idea of children wearing masks in classrooms is nonsensical. That's completely obvious to everybody. He would say that this is the payoff to make sure that kids can stay in school. And he might say on the basis of children with learning difficulties, children who might have asthma, hay fever, eczema, so on and so forth, that, that they may be exempt. I mean, does that make it OK if you start trimming bits off the edges or, or would you have a blanket ban on making kids wear masks? Um, I don't think it should be up to me. I'm not going to set myself up as a benign dictator of the world, um, although we might be better off. No, I think we need evidence and the government has not been forthcoming with evidence. We've basically had an almost unlimited budget to conduct trials and yet we haven't conducted any randomised controlled trials with masks. Why not? It wouldn't have been very hard. The place where secondary attack rates matter, which is in the household, we could easily have done randomised controlled trials. The same government advisor I created at the beginning told me the reason we haven't done trials is because we know that masks don't work. They're a very obvious signal. It makes it look like the government is doing something. So no, I think this is completely unfair to children. And I say, and, and positioning as schools staying open at the expense of masks is a logical fallacy because unless there's evidence that masks help, it's just fallacious to say that, that we need to do it in order to keep schools open. I think this is really about pandering to teachers unions. And the problem is that by introducing masks when there was no evidence, they've now been set up as this 
important intervention when they're not. Look, right at the beginning, you had um, Fauci in the US, you had Chris Whitty in the UK saying that masks don't work, so we're not going to we're not going to impose them. Then masks were introduced as an intervention, and the backpedaling is beginning. Um, somebody called Dr. Leanna Wren, she's a CNN medical advisor and former CDC, she described cloth masks recently as facial decorations. We're basically asking people to decorate their face with something which is highly uncomfortable at the expense of learning, socialization, and communication. I'm sure we'll be talking to you a lot in the two o'clock slot. And do you know what? I think you'd make a wonderful benign dictator. So get cracking on that. I look forward to being your subject.